मन्नारे तेरी आदत ने कोई बदले गहारी जाना सूर मन्नारे क्या बाद लेंगे माया के मजदूर चोरे ज्वारी क्या बाद लेंगे माया के दातुरा चीलम चतुरा रहनाश में बरपूर मन्नारे तेरी आदत ने कोई बदले गारी जा मेलत पत राहेता साद मतंगे चूर पांच विषयों मेलत पत सुपने में भी नहीं रह मलक से दूर मन्नारे तेरी आदत ने कोई बदले सिमरत वेद की रीति सत संग करो जरूर सूरत सिमरत वेद की रीति सत संग करो जन्म के पाप कटेंगे हो जाएंगे माफ कजूर मन्नारे तेरी आदत ने कोई बदले गारी जाना सूर मन्नारे प्रेम गुरु रामनंद लाई कबीर कर बरपूर बागति प्रेम गुरु रामनंद लाई कबीर कर बरपूर कहत कबीरा सुनो रे संतो बज अनहाद दूर मन्ना तेरी आदत ने कोई बदले गारी जाना सूर मन 
change your habits. How will the thief and gambler change your? They are the slaves of Maya. They who remain intoxicated, full of to the brim with ham, wine, and a narcotic pipe. They remain involved in the evil pleasures, always deep intoxicated in them. Thus you don't find happiness even in dreams and you remain far from God. Do the Simran of the soul, which is the practice of the Veda, and surely attend satsang. The scene of birth will be cut, and uh, your faults will be forgiven. Guru Ramananda Tash Kabir in devotion and love, and in that way he liberated him. Kabir says, Listen, O oh saint, the limitless sound is ringing within you. So this is the bhajan we take into consideration this evening for satsang. <coughs> it's a bhajan by Kabir Sal. He is understood as a great authority, great master, one of those prototype masters from which so many other masters came about. All the masters of our path, they revere him as one of the greatest of them. He wrote very beautiful poetry. His songs are sung everywhere in northern India. Especially in Rajasthan, you can find villagers who do not know anything about any science, maybe illiterate, but they sing Kabir's bhajans. He was very special because he was one of the first masters who <clears throat> really rose above caste, color, creed, the trains, religions. And he was very heavily persecuted because of this. Because he was born in a Muslim family, but he became disciple of Ramananda, who was a Hindu. 
He was an outcast. Maybe you don't understand what it means to be an outcast in India. It means to be out of the f system of forecasts. Even the lower of these castes, those of the servants, they have no value whatsoever in the Indian society. If you are an outcast, an Orthodox Hindu wouldn't even like to see your shadow. <coughs> so it is. He was a weaver. And weavers, like all the artisans in India, they are outcast. So socially they have no value whatsoever. Sukhavir was born in such a circumstance. So a person born in such a social circumstance, how could you become so, so venerated all over India? And we can say all over the world. He must have had a very special value. He must have done very special things. And he must have also written very beautiful teachings which people appreciated so much and keep appreciating. All the Sandmat Gurus keep commenting upon his hymns. I heard so much commenting from both Sanjay Masakirpal and Kabir. <coughs> So what is he saying in this bhajan? He's talking about habits. A man, only a brave God man will change your habits. So it begins. Because that's what really conditions our life our habits. We may <coughs> want to be different. We may want to live a different lifestyle. Maybe you like to be very spiritual. We would like not to be addicted to anything, dependent on anything and be free. But our habits <coughs> are our prison. So despite of our <coughs> will maybe to be different, to change and be different, we keep falling again and again in the same habits. <coughs> we can say, tell me which habits you have. And I will tell you who you are. What's your value? <coughs> so it would be... It's a very, very important topic, this. Because we might believe anything. We might be convinced of anything. We might understand ourselves as belonging to any religion or non belonging to any religion. We may understand ourselves as whatever we want. But what we are, what we are eventually is really the habits that we have. So on the spiritual path, one of the most fundamental topics, one of the wheel around which all of us turn, it's our habits.
People say I become a Buddhist, I become a Hindu, I have become this and that. But they keep having the same habits. They keep doing the same things. They keep having the same lifestyle. No real change in their life. So, what does it matter what you become? It's just a convention. It's not a change, it's just a convention. It's just adding to the conventions that you already have some more. This is not going to make you free. This is going to make you even more addicted, I would say, to your beliefs, adding to what you already have. In my life, whenever I saw anybody becoming religiously or philosophically convinced of something, And then I saw them keep having the same habits. Eating meat, drinking wine, taking drugs. I thought, what has changed with you? Your conviction, your belief, what changes it brought into your life? You're just the same as before. Because eventually we are what we intake into this body, not we, what we believe. This body, it is formed by those things that we eat, those things that we drink, even the air that we breathe. All of this is shaping this body and consequently this mind. It's not what we believe that shapes this body and this mind. It's not our beliefs that liberate us. It's the lifestyle that we have that shows how free we are. And a free person is not addicted to anything. Every person is somebody who chooses what to take and what not to take. And it's not compared by habits, by addictions, dependence. So that's why on a real spiritual path, first of all, you will be asked at least to become vegetarian. Because if you keep introducing into this your body corpses, dead flesh, that's what you are. You are a corpse. You are a dead flesh. If you keep introducing into this body alcoholics, your mind won't function properly. By and by you become more and more idiot. That's what you become. If you keep in taking drugs, then what you become? You lose your mind eventually. So, you may understand yourself as Buddhist, Islamic, Hinduist, Sant Mat also if you want. But if you don't change your lifestyle, if you don't change your habits, nothing has happened with you, nothing has changed. So the path of the master is very important to at least change your diet to begin with. Just that's just the beginning. If you don't change your diet, you're nowhere, really. Because as I said, this body and this mind is not shaped by what you believe in. 
is shaped by what you intake into this body. And this body has such an intelligence that we may eat all the same things. But inside of this body is going to transform in myself, as myself, in you, as you, and so on and so forth. The same food becomes cereal, becomes Joseph, becomes Lazi. Isn't it amazing? So that's a, just the beginning. <clears throat> what we eat, what we drink, the habits that we have. If you don't change any of these, we stand nowhere. We may have even inner experiences, but that's not freedom. Freedom is freedom from addictions, from habits, compulsions. Is the capacity of choosing what you want and refusing what you don't want. So that's why here also Kabir is telling only a brave God man will change your habits. And it's very true. We are able to change our habits only if you are lucky enough to meet a living master and to recognize the living master to have a profound spiritual experience, take initiation, accept the teachings, and follow those teachings. That's the only way of changing. Otherwise, we stay the same all our life. We may do the most wonderful discourses, speeches about philosophical concepts. But then when we come to our habits, we are just the same. So spending time with a living master is the most helping factor in changing our lifestyle, in changing our habits, in changing very deeply within. By ourselves, we will never change. Only if we accept the teachings of a master and we follow them, it's the only way of changing. But we want to be free. We understand that freedom is doing what we wish. Means, be free means follow our habits. But that's not freedom. That's, that's dependence. That's addiction. Molana Rumi says, those who do not run away from freedom means the egoistic freedom, they will never be free. So if you want to be free, run away from your freedom. Accept the teachings, follow them, apply them to your life. Get rid of your habits, especially the bad habits. Live a healthy lifestyle. <coughs> then your consciousness will become more and more clear. Your mind will become more and more sharp. Your intuitive mind will become more and more prominent. You will have revelations. You will have visions of truth. And above all, you will be capable of choosing your own lifestyle, not out of compulsory something but of your own free choice.
So then what is he saying, this wonderful Kabir? How will the... So small. Thief and the gambler change you. They are slaves of Maya. They are intoxicated with <coughs> ham, wine, and narcotics. In India, you can find so many so-called spiritually spiritual people. <laughs> Sadhus, people who say they have renounced the world, but if you watch their life, they are worse than the worldly people. I've seen so many of them, they are really miserable beings, most of them. They are so proud of their Chilum, they are hashish or marijuana. That's what they do their whole life. Spoiling their brain with such an excessive use of this. And this they understand to be their spirituality. They get intoxicated with some drugs. That's the only thing they can do. Because they can't follow discipline they don't want to follow any master. They just want to be addicted to their addictions. When I went to India the first time in 1973 and I ended up in Rishikesh, the second day I was in India, I saw all the, there were so many of those sadhus at the time. Now if you go to Rishikesh, you will find very few. Very, very few. All over India, actually, there are less and less. But at the time, there were so many of them. And I, you know, before going to India, I thought, all these people, they must be doing lots of meditation, yoga, and live a healthy life, spiritual life, be kind of enlightened. But then I saw them all with their chilum in their hands. They were all smoking marijuana, or ganja as they call it, or ashish. So I was so disappointed. And wherever I went, I saw the same thing. Yes, there were some ashrams here and there where they were doing yoga or meditation. But most of these sadhus, they were just what we call drags addicted. So I was so disappointed. At some point, I thought, why did I come to India? These people are all drugs addicted. I saw so many in Italy drugs addicted. What is the difference? So I was so disappointed. Then at some point, I thought, but maybe this spirituality is <laughs> it's a madness of mine. It doesn't exist anywhere. How did I get into this? So thanks God, after a few days, somebody gave me the address of Massacre Paul. So I went to Deradun from Rishikesh. And uh, I met a master, my God. I didn't meet a sadhu smoking chillum. With his mind blown away. I met a man who was such an incredible man. He wasn't smoking uh, any of these drugs. He was so holy, so full of light. And he filled me with such an incredible light and upliftment. So I thought, thanks God, it's not a dream, my spirituality. It's true, it's real, it's here. You can find it. So as Kabir is saying here, if I had stayed in Rishikesh with these 
gamblers and uh, drugs addicted, nothing would have changed in my life. Maybe I would have become one of them. But thanks God, my destiny was different. So I went to Manav Kendra, I met Massacre Pal, and that made my life really. And now it's 40 years, 45 years today since I was initiated. It was 25th of April, 1973. So the meeting with Master Kripal changed so much my life. My life was already changed a lot before I met him. But when I met him, this really dig such a deep roots inside of me. This lifestyle, his teachings. This wanting to be in control of myself and not controlled by myself. So, I can just agree with Kabirji, with the fact that only a brave God man can change your habits. Only a brave master can direct your life and take you to a lifestyle which is the ideal for us human beings. So Master, what does it teach us? Do not depend from anything outside. You may use the things of this world, but do not be dependent on them. Try to find the source of your joy, the source of your peace within yourself, because that's the only place where you can find it. Anything that comes from outside, today will be pleasing to us, will create maybe enthusiasm in us. Tomorrow, it won't be the same. After a week, we don't care anymore about that thing. There is no lasting source of joy outside of ourselves. It's so transitory comes and goes. We like something, we have it after some time. It doesn't mean anything anymore to us. But if we daily we sit in meditation, we do our spiritual practice, and we contact our inner light, that's always great experience. That always creates a feeling of blissfulness feeling of peace, of love, of real intoxication which doesn't come from drugs, but comes from uh, our soul. And this, we don't have to pay anything for it. It's free. We don't have to go outside of ourselves looking for it. It's with us. So once you meet a master that makes you aware of this fact, isn't it great? And not only convinces you philosophically or intellectually that God is within you, but he gives you an inner experience also of this kind in which you yourself contact this divinity within you. That's the greatest lack in life. That's to be lucky. But then, that shouldn't be enough. Then we have to keep this contact 
once this content has been awakened within us, then it's for us to make it alive, make it fresh again and again. But in my life, I found very few people who have been able to keep it fresh their whole life. We have been persistent, persevering, going on day after day, do the spiritual practice, be in touch with the light within you, be inspired, be blissful, ecstatic, intoxicated maybe. For most of the people, habits again come back. They slip back in their old habits, mental, physical, and they lose touch with the light. This is another ugly something which I've seen. Seeing people, meeting people after years, people who had been on the spiritual path, and at the time looking nice, looking beautiful. Then you meet them after many years, maybe, they have lost touch completely with their light. They become ugly. They have no light in their eyes. They've forgotten everything. So, once we find touch with the light, we shouldn't lose it, because then darkness will be even more dark. You can never know where we end up once we lose touch with the light. So keep doing your spiritual practice, keep going on. At the end of the song, Kabir says, Brahmanand, who was his guru, attached Kabir in love and devotion. In this way, he liberated him. So that's it. Once we have opened the inner way by the grace of the Master, we have experienced something, then we have to keep nourishing that cultivating it. Sanji used to give the example of a gardener that plants, plants in his garden, flowers, vegetables, whatever it is, and then he just goes away and leaves them there. He doesn't care about them, he doesn't water them, doesn't give them nourishment. They will dry, they will not grow. What's the use of planting plants which do not grow? which you do not nourish and keep them growing. So the gardener keeps, I mean a wise gardener who plants anything, then you will take care of that something. So initiation is like a plant of this kind, it's a flower that we plant within ourselves. Then, if you are wise gardeners, we will keep watering this flower, this plant, with our meditation, with our satsang, with our retreats. So this will grow. And from a tiny plant, we will become a big hawk. And a hawk gives shadow to so many people. You can see hawks here around. They're so big, incredibly big. Hundreds of people can see it underneath them. So let's be brave. Kabirji has given us such beautiful teachings. Change your habits. Don't be dependent on anything. Just be free. Don't spoil this temple of God, which is your body, by introducing alcoholics, drugs, and all these 
garbage. Keep it holy because it's holy. Be free. Don't be dependent on anything. This is what the path teaches to us. If you want to take it, it's for our good. If you don't want to take it, it's for our bad. So we thank Kabir for this beautiful bhajan, these beautiful teachings. And it's for us to keep following them and make our life.